It is December the 19th, 2013. I am Steve Growick, the webmaster of www.gerweck.net, growick.net, your source on the World Wide Web for all your pro wrestling news since 1997. And today I have a very special guest here at growick.net. She's very pretty. And she can also wrestle. In fact, she is currently the XBW and CCW Ladies Champion. Today, I give you Leah Von Dutch. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? We're doing great. We appreciate your time. I know you've been very busy. In fact, uh, you just recently completed a tour in Europe. Can you tell us about it? Some of the sites you saw, uh, some of the shows you wrestled on, and some of the opponents that you faced. Okay. So uh, for my tour, I wrestled all over England. I wrestled in Scotland, Germany, and Finland. Um, I wrestled for IPW UK, uh, EAW, the DWA in Germany against Shelly Martinez, so that was really great. EAW for Nick Ashbury, he's really, he's a fantastic promoter, and his shows are always really fun to do. And, um, you know, I wrestled a lot of new girls that I've never had the chance to wrestle before, so this tour was was really great. Some of the girls were making their debut, so um, it was it was different for me because I'm used to being the the unexperienced like the inexperienced one. Whereas now I had to carry the matches, so that was really like um, a learning curve for me. And it was nice to see that I could actually do that. So so the tour was went very well, and it was a lot of fun. How long were you gone for? How many shows did you do? And what to- sort of job do you have? That allows you to be gone for so long on the road like that. Um, I, well, I was gone for 35 days, and I did, a, I think I did about 10 shows in the 35 days, and I am currently working as an activity manager or an activity aid where I do activities with seniors. And my manager, she's um, actually a wrestling fan, so she's super cool and she's really flexible, and she allows me to have the time off. Um, it does help that I'm part time. But, uh, yeah, no, my manager, she's just, she's fantastic. So, I, yeah, I really can't complain about about her at all. Uh, uh, what was it like working with uh, Shelly Martinez overseas? Working with Shelly was great. You know, it was nice to to work a veteran and work somebody who I haven't worked before. Um, she was really, she's really sweet. Um, you can tell she still has a passion for wrestling. And working her, I was just very, very thankful that I was able to wrestle her. Um, we had a great match, and it was a lot of fun. Now, a lot of people that will be listening to this interview have probably not heard of you or maybe just becoming aware of you. And, of course, I just myself, even being a wrestling journalist, is kind of new to you. So can you give us a little bit of background about your interest in wrestling before you got into wrestling, and then exactly how did you get started uh, in a, in a tra- training school? Um, yeah, well, I was always a fan since I was about 12 years old, and um, – When I started becoming a fan, that's when Trish and Lita both debuted. They debuted around the same time. And once I had seen Trish, you know, she's from Canada, she's blonde, she can kick butt. And then Lita had her high flying, her high flying skills. And she was just, she always had a great attitude too. So once those two came on TV, I really started to get hooked on it. Um, And then when I was 19, I went to a, a wrestling school just to check it out. Um, but the, the person who ran it, you know, said I would never make it. I didn't have the look for it and all of this stuff. So that kind of, it, it lit a fire inside of me. So a few years later, once I graduated from university, um, I was on Kijiji and there was an ad for a ring announcer. So I replied and I went to go see the promoter there and, um, he could tell that I wanted to wrestle. So he asked me if I wanted to start training. I started training. I started training there. And um, what sort of happened was that the person who was training me, he got really busy. So I could only train once every couple of weeks. Um, And then there was a contest for squared circle wrestling uh, where you wrote an essay and then edge would pick the winner and the winner got free training. So I, I entered in my essay, I made it into the top 10, and then the top 4, and then eventually I got chosen for free training at Squared Circle Wrestling, and that's how I got got started. So somebody actually told you you didn't have the look for wrestling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I find that pretty laughable. I don't know if people have seen your pictures, but you're very, very attractive, and obviously you're very athletic, so I don't... 
I don't know what he was looking at exactly. Uh, well, at the <laughs> at the time, you know, I had just started university, and um, you know, you gained the freshman fifteen because you're on your own, you're eating whatever you wanted to. Um, so I did kind of gain weight from that, and then I also tore my ACL, so I wasn't doing any activity. So I had put on a good, you know, fifty, sixty pounds from what I am now. So um, once he told me that, you know, I really, I started getting my butt in shape and I wanted to prove him wrong. And I think I have. (laughs) I would definitely agree with that. Uh, Talk about your debut match. Where was it and who was it against? Um, My debut match was at the Petrolia Fair for CCW and it was against Cherry Bomb. So Cherry Bomb, she had a a hand in help uh, training me. She was really there for me. She was sort of like a mentor. So, uh, yeah, my debut match was against her, and I actually had just recently got footage of it, and I put it on my LVD TV. So if you're interested, you can go on on YouTube and see that first match of mine. Awesome. Uh, talk before you got into wrestling. Did you have? I was kind of alluding to an athletic background. Did you play sports in school? Oh yeah, I played lots of sports. Um, when I grew up, when I was growing up, um, I I did gymnastics, and then I also played soccer since I was four years old. And then I, I've also gotten into competitive diving. I did competitive diving for a couple of years, so I think that's where my high flying skills come into play. Was just because I'm used to flipping around on the diving board. So, um, but I would try everything. You know, I played hockey for a year. I played field hockey. Um, I love to swim, snowboard, golf, pretty much any sport. I'll try it once. So, it, yeah, sports was definitely a big part of, of me growing up. Um, I know you're very early in your career, but you have a highlight so far. Is there one match or one thing that you've done so far that says, wow, so I, I really made it. I mean, this is a, a great measuring stick for the rest of my career. I would say the first time I've ever really felt like a star was my match against Shelly Martinez in Germany because we each had our own like security guard who who would bring us everywhere – Um, I sold out of my merchandise for the first time ever, and it was just like the crowd was so big. It was probably six, seven hundred people at least, and, you know, everybody, there's a huge lineup, and that doesn't always happen, so that was probably the first time I really felt like, like, this is awesome, like, this, this is awesome. I, I've made it, like, I was, I was very happy with, with the way that day went. It was a lot of fun. Now, you talked about wrestling Sher- Shelly Martinez, and of course, we know her from both WWE and TNA, and you just mentioned Cherry Bomb as well, who just recently kind of had a, a look-see with uh, TNA. Mm-hmm. Beyond those girls, is there other uh, notable opponents you've had that maybe some of the wrestling fans might be familiar with? Well, being in Ontario, I find that we have a lot of great female talent. Um, Courtney Rush, I always have great matches with her. I love working with Courtney Rush. Me and Zandra Bale... We've been a tag team, um, and in Europe, Shanna, Portugal's perfect athlete, we've been wrestling a lot, and then when when I had my tryout, I actually got to wrestle Beth Phoenix, so that was that was a lot of fun, and that was, wow. that was crazy. I was just, yeah, it's still surreal to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> How is uh, Zandra Bale doing? Because I heard she was injured. Yeah, um, actually, Zandra and Courtney are both injured right now, but they both seem to be making a really quick recovery. So hopefully, I I know Courtney is almost ready to get back into the ring, and Zandra's not far behind. Great. That's good to hear. Uh, I know you mentioned Trish, as you know, grew up uh, kind of watching her. Are, are there others that were kind of influences on your style? I just start watching um, Minami Toyota from Japan, and she's just fantastic. She's um, I I definitely watch her stuff and try to take things from her. Just pretty much, I just like to watch as many females as possible. Even you know, just going to England and to Europe and learning from from those girls. I'm always trying to constantly learn and change my style a bit. So I know I know you're very early in your your career, but obviously you have to set goals and. What is your ultimate goal? I mean, if everything would work out in your career, where would you end up? I would love to work for the WWE or for TNA for sure. Uh, either one of those companies would be great. Your family and friends, what do they think about your uh, career in professional wrestling? I have the most supportive family and the most supportive friends ever. Um, 
my mom, she loves it. She wants to be a manager. She just thinks it's fantastic. My dad thinks it's hilarious. I'll send him, you know, YouTube matches and stuff like that. And he just, he thinks it's hilarious, shows all of his friends. And um, my friends, you know, if I have a show around, they're there. So I have a really great supportive system. Now, are you, do you like to critique your own matches? Do you watch a lot of your matches back and say, oh, I, I, I can learn from this. I see what I've done well. I see what I need to improve on. And do you have, do you ever offer, or I should say, ask other people to say, hey, look at my match and just, you know, give me a couple of pointers here and there. Oh, yeah, definitely. I do that for every single match. Um, I watch all of my matches back. I'm very critical of my matches. Um, and I always ask somebody to watch them. If there's a veteran there, I, I try to ask them to watch my match because that's, you know, they're going to see things that you won't think of. So I do that 100%. Like I was on uh, Preston City Wrestling with Doug Williams, and I asked him to watch my match. And, you know, he's just such a great wrestler himself that, like, any advice he can give me is, you know, is awesome. So I definitely, definitely, definitely always ask people to watch my match. Now, I just interviewed uh, another lady wrestler, woman's wrestler, and uh, Darcy Dixon, and her goal was to wrestle Beth Phoenix. So you've already done that. <laughs> you've got to wrestle, uh, I think, a dream match for a lot of you know, female wrestlers out there. Now, now that you've wrestled her, who would be kind of a dream opponent? Is there one or two ladies that come to mind? Uh, I, someday I'd really like to get her in the ring and, and work her. I would really love to work Natalia. Um, I'd like to work Paige from NXT and definitely Gail Kim. Those are... Those are my top three. They're just they're they are just awesome. So I'd love to work those three girls. I guess in, as well going back to your goals. Obviously, worked at WWE, but I know a, a, a common goal is to use wrestling to kind of travel the world. And you've already worked, uh, you know, overseas. You worked in Europe. Is there other co- continents or countries you say? Oh, hope, hopefully someday I get booked there. I like to wrestle there someday. Yeah, for sure. I would love to to wrestle in Australia. I think that's my next. Uh, that's my next goal for 2014 is getting over to Australia and wrestling over there. And do you like to travel? I love it. Yes. I actually used to be the most homesick person that anybody would ever know. Um, so it's really crazy to think how much I love to travel because when I was younger, I hated leaving home. But now it's just it's what I live for. I get the traveling bug all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, anybody seeing a picture of you, you're in great shape. How do you stay in such great shape, and can you give us some insight into your training? And- well, I would say I work out probably four to five times a week, and then I have my shows once to twice a week. So that, like, I try to work out every day, and if I'm not working out during the week, then I try to go to to wrestling practice as well. So it's just you, you just have to work out and eat properly <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know it's 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 said so many ways but the, the bottom line is you have to uh, exercise and eat right and I, I guess along with diet is there any dieting tips that you subscribe to uh, I just try I think for most part everybody knows what's healthy and what's not um, I do have a problem I do like my sweets so I try not to you know, I'll have I'll eat them in moderation because I found in the past if I just cut them out all together, then I find I binge later on. So I just just eat in moderation. Just eat, you know, your your sweets or your junk food in moderation and eat for most part pretty healthy. So that's what I find works for me. I don't really subscribe to anything. I have a lot of friends who are in the fitness business, so I will just ask them for advice or for meal plans and and see how it goes. So anybody out there listening, if you want to get some sweets for for Leah here, no, get no. a small get a get a small box. No, right? <laughs> no it's the holidays. Huge. It's hard enough. Because <laughs> you know you go you go shopping and you see these huge boxes of chocolate, and then there's just this real like four piece chocolate thing you can get. That's you know. Yeah, no, get me salmon. Send me salmon or chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Are you a fan of MMA at all? I don't really watch it, no. Um, I, I'll i catch it here and there, but I really – I'm a sensitive person, and when I see that, it's just – I don't know. It's just – it's not for me. I don't like seeing other people hit other people, which is strange because I am in wrestling, but <laughs> – 
it's a whole different thing that you know MMA and wrestling. So I'm not I don't I don't really follow it. If it's on pay per view and I'm at a restaurant, yeah, I'll watch it. But other than that, yeah, I don't know anybody that that has anything to do with it. So. <laughs> now, no, obviously you're very busy uh, traveling and, and working matches, but uh, do you get a chance to watch uh, WWE and TNA at all? I do. Um, when I was on my trip in Europe, I didn't watch it at all just because I didn't have TV and it comes on like we're five hours ahead in England. But at home, that's that's like the only show I actually watch on a consistent basis is WWE just because right now um, in Canada – for some reason, Spike TV doesn't have TNA on it anymore. You have to get a special channel. So so I watch WWE, but I, I haven't really caught up on TNA too much recently. Just curious, when you, know, when you watch WWE, uh, what do you think of their product, and who are some of the stars that you uh, enjoy to watch right now? I would say, like, the stars that I really enjoy watching, you know, CM Punk, Brian Daniel, um, I like to watch the shield. I find those guys like they're very believable in what they do. And it's definitely something that I strive for. And I really, I'm enjoying their products right now. You know, the divas division does have some work to do, but, um, I think with total divas, it's definitely headed in the right direction, giving the divas more airtime. And then NXT also has great divas there. So, um, besides like the divas division, I, I really do enjoy their product right now, and and the Divas division is definitely starting to to go in the right direction, which is nice to see. Now I know you're you're, you're very early in your career, but at this point in your career, what, what do you consider your biggest strength, and what do you consider your biggest weakness, or something you need to really work on to to be a better wrestler somewhere down the line? Um, I would say my strength right now is definitely being heel. Uh, just because when I first started wrestling, everybody was booking me as a baby face, but then I find with my heel character, I really get to be somebody who I'm not, and I have a lot of fun being being a heel. So that's definitely my strength, and my weakness, which I've been working on, is um, is promos. You know, I've been doing, I've been trying to do a lot of a lot of promos, just doing them differently, not just standing in front of an iPhone camera, um, just talking in front in front of people, and um, I think. I progressed pretty well so far. You know, I I did a promo for Shine against Nikki Rocks and and I got a lot of positive feedback from that, but also I've gotten <laughs> some not so positive feedback from my other promo, so that's what I'm working on. <laughs> you, you know, it was funny when I when I first became aware of you and I saw some of your pictures, I thought she looks like a, a natural baby face and then I saw some of your work and cutting promos as a heel and I thought that really works out and then I thought the parallel to Trish Stratus was here's this bombshell, beautiful blonde, but yet she could really play a nasty heel too. So yeah, it's important to be able to play both. I just find with um, the heel, I get to be a loud mouth, which is nice. And it's also much easier to cut a promo as a heel and being, being mean than as a baby face and, you know, trying to, to stay a baby face while you're cutting a promo. So that's definitely one of my, things areas that I have to work on but yeah I love being a heel it's just I can really tick off the crowd <laughs> so it's fun <laughs> and that's that's the beauty of wrestling is getting that reaction you know, whether it be a baby face or a heel yeah. that's 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 when you've earned your money out there yeah definitely like when I did um when I won that essay contest we had to tell Edge why we loved wrestling and one of the things was that I said was that I just love when people boo me and hate me so I've always enjoyed that since the beginning of uh, of wrestling and working with Cody Diener because Diener, he's a heel, and he really brought me under his wing. So a lot of the heel stuff I do comes from him. So I was fortunate in working with him. Now, I always ask this of, of the female guests that I have because obviously – Majority of professional wrestling is male. It's a very male dominated, <laughs> do, do, dominated sport. But at the same time, you know there are female wrestlers out there, and, and a lot of the independent shows a lot of times have female wrestling on it. And of course, TNA and WWE does have their women's divisions or knockouts divisions. Uh, from your perspective, when you're traveling around, and it's, it's interesting that you went overseas. Um, what is the perception of women's wrestling? What do fans want from the women? Do they want the athletic in-ring ability, or are they looking more for just the eye candy of, of, of women out there? Well, it's really hard to say. Um, I find 
when it's in, like, it's it's super hard because if it's an, an older crowd, let's say it's an, a, over 18, like, sure, they might want to see cat fight, but then you never know. Like, you might do the cat fight, do the hair pulling, do all that girl stuff when all they, and then they start chanting, we want wrestling. So you never really know what their crowd wants. Um, I think you just have to incorporate a bit of both. You know, you have to incorporate some of, like, the girly stuff as well as wrestling um, just to please everybody just because there's so many opinions and people want to see different things. So you you have to try to do both. Uh, it it can sometimes be very difficult for, for a female to to find that balance. Now, you mentioned earlier, you know, obviously your goal is to either be in WWE or TNA. Those are the two biggest stages we have. I just wondered if you've ever put feelers out to them, let them know, you know, send them a tape, send them some promos, let them know that, hey, I'm out there and I'm training, I'm, tr- I'm trying to get better. Or have you had any contact or are, are you made aware that they're aware of you out there? Oh, yeah, definitely. I do that all the time. I've sent in my stuff. Um, I was actually, I need to, to do that again, you know. I'll give them a phone call. I'll I'll talk to the contacts that I do know. Um, it's all about who you know, getting your your name out there because you know if if I don't bug them, then they're not gonna remember me. Whereas if I do, you know, give them a phone call every month or or send them my stuff, then I'm on their radar. So I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, if you don't bug them, they're probably not gonna bug you. No, exactly. Like I try not to do it. You know, I don't want to be annoying about it, but but every couple of months I will get in contact. Um, but I do know quite a few people who do work there. My one trainer, uh, Sean Spears, he just got re-signed. So I'm always, you know, keeping in contact with the people that I do know that that are in the business um, on that on that different level. Seeing, you know, if anybody if they're looking for girls at the time or or what. So yeah, yeah it's. It's very important to, to to keep in contact. It's all about who you know. Now, obviously, NXT they do have a lot of women already under contract on, on their roster. I just I was curious if they were to bring you in and they say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna sign you tomorrow. You know, come down to uh, Orlando, start training, and then the first day they get there and they say, okay, now what separates you from the other girls? What makes you special? Why should someday we put you on television? What what, what kind of things could you tell them? Well, I think the fact that I do have experience already, just because a lot of the girls there, you know, they come from a fitness model background, so they've never been in front of an audience like that before. You know, I have been in front of an audience. I have made mistakes. I have had my bad matches, and I I learn from them. I won't, you know, if I screw up during a match, I'm not just going to stop, whereas somebody new who who's never done this before might. Um, I do have that experience of, of being on the independent level of already doing my promos in front of people. You know, I, I think I know how to interact with the crowd pretty well. And that's not, it's something that takes time to learn. You know, if you're going to hire a fitness model, now you're going to have to train them. Then they have to go out in front of everybody. And this isn't the independent level. They're going out in front of like millions of people. So if they screw up, I don't know they might not know how to react appropriately, whereas I do have that experience and uh, I would know how to react. And and I just find like my character as well is just like I'm trying to always improve and revamp and I do ask for, for criticism and I do ask for help, um, which not, you know, a lot of female wrestlers don't do. So, so I definitely think um, I do bring quite a bit to the table. Now, it's got to be frustrating because you here you are, you're training, you go to wrestling school, uh, you have the matches, you're trying to get better, you critique yourself, and then at the same time, as you were alluding to there, they a lot of times go out and hire fitness models, girls that look really good but maybe have no wrestling background. Now, how frustrating is that for someone like you and the other girls on the circuit out there that are you know really trying to bust their butt and, and get better and improve, and here they are, they go out and they find the prettiest model they can find and, and put under contract. Well, I think, you know, they might not last that long. Like, if they were to hire me, I'm going to be there. Like, that's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be putting my 100% into it. I don't have another motive. You know, I don't want to get into to modeling or, or acting or anything like that. Like, my passion is is wrestling. So it can get kind of frustrating because you do wonder where their passion lies. But, um, 
you know, Trish, she did start out as a fitness model. So, you know, there are girls who can definitely, definitely make it in the business. It just, it can be frustrating. You know, I put all this time in. I know I've, I haven't been in the business that long, but I put in more time than them anyways. <laughs> you know, I paid my dues and they just, they get a free walk in the park, but it's just the way the business is. It just means, you know, it's not my time yet. Now, I was actually going to ask, that was one of the questions I actually had for you, and you just answered it there, modeling, because uh, obviously you're very pretty. That was, I, you do want to wrestle, but I mean, would that be something that somewhere down the road you would say, yeah, if you know, if it doesn't work out, I could, I could always go and model, I have such a pretty face. Um, I, I enjoy modeling, um, but actually what I'm going to be starting to do in January, which might be a, a, a backup is um, I'm starting a stunt course. So I think if anything oh. was, was to happen with wrestling, or not happen with wrestling, I would definitely want to do that as a backup. Would be, I'd rather do something physical and fun. I don't know. I just find, I just find, like, acting as a, as a stunt person instead of modeling just seems like so much more fun. I like to be active all the time. And just standing in front of a camera just doesn't, I don't know. It's just not that appealing to me for for an actual career. Now, what sort of injuries have you uh, occurred so far? Any major uh, bumps and bruises along the way? Well, I sprained my thumb yesterday, so you never Ooh. realize how important a thumb is until it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I would probably say like the the biggest injury I had. Um, I went to go do a sunset flip, and the girl dropped me on my head. Um, so that could have been really bad, but I ended up getting a mild concussion, a bruised neck, and a bruised sternum. So that was, thankfully, knock on, on wood, that was uh, the biggest injury that I've had so far in wrestling. You know, another thought, I have, if, if wrestling doesn't work out, and obviously I hope it does work, that's what you're, you're, you're trying to do, but you've got a great voice, too. I don't know if like maybe doing voiceover work somewhere down the line would be a lucrative business for you. That'd be a lot of fun. I don't really know how you would get into that, but <laughs> no, that, would, that would definitely be a lot of fun. They probably have courses for that, too, I would imagine. Oh, so. I'm sure. I'm sure, yeah. Like, I like to try anything unusual. Like, I've always been, even with sports and stuff like that, I like to try try the unusual sports, the unusual careers. It's just, I find it more fun. So, Talk about uh, all ladies' uh, shows, women's shows. I know there's... Definitely, uh, there's Shimmer, there's Shine. I just wondered if you ever worked for either of those organizations. And just in general, uh, your thoughts on all women's type shows. Uh, yeah, I worked for Shimmer. I made my Shimmer debut at the beginning of 2013. And then I've worked for Shine twice. And Shine is, you know, I love Shine. That's my favorite place to work. You know, it's just such a different atmosphere being in a locker room with all females. Usually I'm... It's me, another girl, and then we're with, like, ten guys. So being in a locker room full of females, it's a lot of fun. We get a little crazy. It's a, There's lots of joking around, but I find, like, in North America, the female indie scene, we're all very, very tight, and it's a lot of fun when you when you get to see those girls. So I love the all-female shows. For people that want to check you out, uh, obviously I saw some of your matches on YouTube. Is there... Do you have your own channel, and is there uh, DVDs you can recommend for people to check out some of your work? Well, I don't have any DVDs, but I have I have my YouTube channel. It's Leah Von Dutch, and I've been doing an LVD TV, which was just kind of um, a blog throughout my European tour, and I think it's going to continue on further just because uh, I have gotten a lot of positive response from it. But at the end of each LVD TV, there is a match with with me, so if you want to see see some matches you can check those out i will also sometimes post some on facebook or twitter and that's both at leah von dutch so if you want to follow me along uh yeah you'll definitely see me post matches in the lvd tv you being a serious wrestler sometimes we see you know they do crazy things with the women they do bikini matches and, and night uh bra and panties is that something you'd be opposed to doing uh, no, if I had the proper build up, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind doing it. It's not something that, you know, that I'd prefer, but I also felt that way about a hardcore match. Like I was so super against a hardcore match and then I had a my very first one against Kaylee Ray and it was a lot of fun. So I I'm open I'm open to anything. 
What's the best advice someone's given you in the business? Uh, probably just, you know, just listen and and speak when you're spoken to. That's definitely something uh, that's gone that's gotten me pretty far. You know, just just be respectful because there's a lot of places that don't teach respect, and uh, it'll get you far in the business if you're respectful. So that's definitely the number one advice that that I've been given. And what advice can you offer? Because you know, sometimes I get uh, emails. People say, you know, can you recommend a good wrestling school? Or if I really want to do this, what should I do? If I I mean, obviously, we know wrestling schools for guys. Some people we want to referee. Some people want to become managers. Sometimes I get contacts from from girls who just want to, you know, valet. What type of uh, what kind of advice could you offer somebody that would maybe consider getting into professional wrestling? Well, definitely go to a reputable school. I would definitely recommend, you know, Tyson Dukes. He runs the uh, he runs the school in Windsor. So if you're around that area. Go train with him. If you're in the Toronto area, go to Squared Circle. Definitely go to a reputable school. Um, go around, travel as much as you can, and and just do whatever you can to, to get started in the business. You know, I started off selling merchandise, selling 50-50 tickets, ringing the bell, and then eventually I got my way into managing and then ring announcing and, and eventually wrestling. So just, just try to get yourself out there. Just go to shows. If they need somebody, bring your stuff with you. And uh, if they need somebody, volunteer. So just you're going to have to to definitely make some sacrifices, but but it's worth it in the long run. Now, one thing I really like about you, too, is your ring gear. Uh, who designs your ring gear, or did you come up with that yourself? I designed the ring gear, and the girl who makes it, she is from my hometown. She's actually from – we went to the same high school together, and she makes – dance outfits and figure skating outfits but um i i've come up with probably 95 percent of the designs and she and then she'll make them so i find you know you definitely have to put in money because like if you don't look professional nobody's going to take you seriously as a professional so that's why i've got like i'm addicted to getting ring gear made um, I have my own theme music for both Babyface and Heel. You know, it's very, very important to market yourself in a professional manner. I think I saw you had like a orange and white or gray, and I thought those are perfect colors. For, I think uh, you had great color scheme and great patterns for your for your ring gear. I think that's yeah, tremendous. Yeah, when I definitely when I first started, I tried to keep it all like a Dutch based theme. That gear that you're talking about, like it has the Dutch lion logo on the side of it. The other gear, like everybody always says, oh, it's the American colors, but red, white, and blue, that's the, the Dutch flag. So I've I've tried to keep it mostly Dutch theme, but it gets kind of difficult after a while. So, but I just find, yeah, like gear is probably, I would say, 100%, like the most important thing to look professional. You know, I, th- I think that that's a that's a really good point because we we've talked a lot about wrestling, and I think sometimes just to get you noticed is something that, like I said before, you know, what separates you because there are so many different wrestlers, and one thing that can separate you is the ring gear. And we've interviewed people that you know design ring gear for other people as well. So I I think that's important. I think sometimes we overlook that. that you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start wrestling. I'm gonna get some gear, and I'm just gonna start wrestling, but. To have something that sticks out and people are like, oh yeah, that was cool gear. That was really that was something different. Uh, makes you unique, and I think in life you have to be unique because there's so many people that are kind of on the same plane or same level. And if anything that can make you unique and stick out, you you definitely have to gravitate towards. Yeah, definitely. Like I remember when I first saw saw Macho Man, and I was just like, you know, I like him. And someone asked me why because I hadn't even seen him wrestle yet, and I was like, because his outfit. <laughs> So it can make it can make uh, quite a difference. Like I had a girl come up to me, ask me if I was in the WWE because of my gear, which was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're out and about, uh, obviously uh, you're a little bit of a local celeb there. Do people recognize you and say, "Oh yeah, you're you're the wrestler, right?" Um, sometimes not. It doesn't happen too often. But my sister, she just started going out with this boy. And uh, she told him what my wrestling name was, and he actually had heard of me. And he he lives about four hours away, so that was kind of that was really strange. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So you're already a little bit of a celebrity already. That, that, that's, that's, that's awesome. I, yeah, I guess so. And in Finland, I was in the mall and somebody goes, Leah. And I was like, what the? I was like, that's really weird. <laughs> Well, I think, too, it's the Internet. Uh, you know, people can look you up, and obviously you're on Facebook and Twitter, and people can say, oh, yeah, I, I've seen your matches or I've heard of you now. There's, you know, on Facebook there's always the posters for the show. So, you know, it, it's a great vehicle to uh, promote yourself out there. Yeah, no, definitely. Social media is definitely a big blessing. It's it's way easier to get your name out there now. Uh, what kind of music are you into? Well, I pretty much like anything except for rap and country. <laughs> so, so then you said you said you had music specifically for your different personas and Babyface or Heel, right? Yes, yeah. Um, I actually have his name's DJ Mace, and he I worked with him in Windsor, and he makes my music for me, and it just it turns out awesome. It turns out so so good. Would you ever consider posing for Playboy? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, WWE and, uh, like, they're a PG-rated show. If if you pose for them, if you pose for Play, Playboy, they might not hire you because they don't want, you know, kids going on the Internet and seeing that stuff, so... You know what's what's weird, and, and you're right. Right now they're they are PG, but of course in, in the past they did work with Playboy, and they mm-hmm. had some of the girls uh, appear in that publication. So I just thought some, sometimes they're somewhat related. But I agree. Right now, right now might, might might not be the best decision. But somewhere down the line, if they would call. Uh, no, I like to keep things to the imagination. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. I know you got a couple of big shows coming up because uh, a couple of the promoters, uh, you know, obviously send me press releases and and posters. And I know you coming up. You're going to be working against uh, Jennifer Blake, mm-hmm. who is just returning from Mexico, who's really almost a full time wrestler now with AAA in Mexico. And uh, you also have a big match, a steel cage match, <laughs> if nothing else, with uh, former WWE diva. Uh, Jillian Hall, can you talk about those shows and some of the other shows that's, that's coming up in in uh, in your world? Yeah, so so against Jennifer Blake, it's it's on the 11th, January 11th for Conflict Wrestling. So that's going to be that'll be a lot of fun. We I've wrestled her once before, and she was she was heel and I was babyface, but now the roles are reversed. So that'll be a lot of fun to to actually you know. Dish out what she gave me the last time I wrestled her. And um, with Jillian Hall, that's my first ever cage match. So that's going to be definitely, uh, it'll be an experience anyways. So just being able to, to wrestle somebody. Again, she's another, you know, veteran who still has such a passion for wrestling because I met her earlier on in the year at XBW and, uh, It'll be fun to to wrestle her in a cage match. So if you're if you're around the area, definitely come check it out. Now, what do you want for Christmas, and are you going to make any New Year's resolutions? Um, well, for Christmas, like I told you, I, one of my Christmas presents is the stunt course. So that's there you go. Yeah, that's what I asked my parents <laughs> for. But I've also asked for I don't know if you're familiar with Lululemon brand clothing, but there, it's a workout clothing company, so I asked for some of that. You know, I pretty much, I just like whatever I get. I'm not a very picky person. And my New Year's resolution is just what I want to do in, in 2014 is wrestle in three more countries that I've never been in. Um, so I can bring it up to ten countries I've wrestled in in three years. So that's my goal for, for 2014. Now, I've seen a lot of the girls out there, they have those Amazon wish lists. Do you have one of those out there, too, for your Christmas <laughs> want list? Yes, I do, <laughs> and I've gotten two DVDs, <laughs> so thank you for that, which is great. So I was surprised that I, anybody even got me anything. <laughs> <laughs> one final question about wrestling. Have you uh, had any, uh, I, I guess, tell tell an interesting road story. Have you ever been ribbed, or have you ever rib anybody real good? Have I ever... I no, I haven't really, but I do have an interesting story where um I was doing customs, which is, you know, you somebody orders a match against the girls that they like, like two girls that they like, and then um they decide who goes over, they decide what type of match, what kind of moves, that kind of thing. 
and then mm-hmm. we film it and we give it to them. So I was doing one of those matches, and I got a match against this very, very, very inexperienced girl who kept um, stiffing me and really, you know, laying it in and and just chopping my back and just being so totally unsafe. And then, um, so I was really upset. And then this veteran, she goes, okay, well, I'll dish it back to her a little bit. And long story short, they ended up getting in a legitimate fist fight during customs. Went outside. They were just kicking each other, punching each other. I've never seen anything like it. And that's definitely, like, the craziest experience that I've I've ever been a part of. So that's, uh, it's you know, I've never really, I don't really rib people. I'm still new, so I don't want to get get in trouble but that's definitely one of like the the craziest stories i've been a part of yeah i know i know people do those customs matches uh is that kind of lucrative for you can you can you make some some money off that yeah definitely you know it can, okay. it can be it can be sometimes a little strange but you get to pick and choose what what scripts you you want to do and which ones you don't want to do and i find it a lot of fun just to to bond with the other girls so sure yeah uh, in closing, and we do appreciate your time, um, can you go ahead and plug your uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, and do you have an official a web, web page out there? Uh, my Both my Facebook and Twitter is Leah Von Dutch, and you can get any of the merchandise that I have on ProWrestlingTees.com slash Leah Von Dutch. I don't have my own personal website right now, but hopefully it will come in the future. And any, any predictions for 2014? Uh, wh- where do you think you'll be in 2014? What kind of year do you think it's going to be for you? Uh, I think it's going to be a really busy year and a lot of traveling, and I am I definitely hope that I will get signed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wish the best for you. We, we hope uh, things work out for you, and we, we, we can either see you on WWE or TNA, and we'll definitely be following you. We wish you nothing but the best of luck. Okay, thank you so much. Hey everyone, this is Leah Von Dutch. For all of your wrestling news, check out Gerwick.net. Bye.